Hello everyone, this is John Gall speaking, back with another video, uh, tutorial video for uh, using Project MoCap, right? Now these, this is a set of tutorial videos that pertain to the, this is a uh, courtesy videos that I'm making for the people who purchase the project that I've built for mocap online okay so guys any inquiries about this project you guys are going to have to uh, contact mocap online for uh, you know availability cost and all that stuff these are just courtesy videos that I'm making to show people who purchase it exactly how to use it not how it was made but how to uh, you know bring in new weapons change the map around to suit what they want it to be like and things like that okay so with this this video here is going to be strictly about the weapon system that comes in project mocap template if you buy it this will be the uh, system that it comes with for the creation of weapons uh, I guess you just call it a weapon tool really because that's really what it is uh, it's a blueprint that gives you the ability to bring in a weapon mesh and convert it into an actual weapon a firing weapon okay so that's what we're going to deal with uh in this video here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring a weapon in a weapon model that i have kidnapped out of the first person shooter template that comes in ue4 right so that will be a basis to show you guys how this can be done okay um, so in this weapons folder in the template here you're going to notice there's a folder in here called blueprints well there's a masters folder in here this is the master weapon blueprint okay all these weapons in the weapons folder are child blueprints of that master blueprint okay so the way I've got this thing built, it's pretty easy to do this, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take in the weapons folder and I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm just going to call this uh, FP gun for the first person gun, okay? And then I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to say import. And here it is. I've got it exported out of that other project, okay? Okay. So this is not going to have, uh, you know, any material on it uh, or a normal map or any of that stuff. It's going to be a checkerboard weapon. So you guys would have to bring in your own textures and all that stuff. I'm not going to go over that, really. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to take the weapons FBX and I'm going to say open. Okay. Now, this right here, it's asking you for a, skele for a skeleton, right? And of course, if your weapon is a mesh... Uh, we need to talk about this because this is important and maybe I can give a demonstration uh, another way uh, these need to be skeletal meshes guys your weapons need to be skeletal meshes because that's the way that all the logic and stuff in this prog uh, project is set up to handle the weapon needs to be a skeletal mesh and if it's not a skeletal mesh, if all your weapons happen to be static meshes, there is a way to convert them over to a skeletal mesh on import, okay? And we may cover that, you know, towards the end of this video. Maybe I can find one that I've got that's actually a static mesh and, and we, can, uh, we can do that, okay? So anyway... Uh, you're going to let it create its own ma uh, own skeleton, right? This weapon does not have any animations, so I'm going to uncheck animations. And once again, I don't have any materials or textures, okay? So I'm going to say import all, okay? Now, here's another little caveat that will help you guys out tremendously in the, in the long run. Um, your weapon... It needs to face down the y-axis okay so you can see here that this particular weapon right here in this left corner it shows you your axes well you can see that this is facing forward down the y-axis um, I think that's how I did this maybe maybe not let me go check some of the weapons uh, I don't want to give you guys bad information and I want to try to uh, 
keep this consistent, right? So that you guys can have a pipeline. Yeah, they're facing down the Y axis. So just you don't have to, but it would be beneficial to you guys if you would just go ahead and make it where you import them. They're facing down the X, okay? Now, just so you guys know, uh, if it's not, you can change that on import, right? So, um, let me go ahead and show you how you do that, all right? So, if I go to import, and we import this same weapon again, and say yes to all, uh, right here you can change its rotation. Right, so if I change this to, oh, I don't know, negative, negative 90 in the Z, and we re-import this thing, it should rotate it to the right. So now it should be facing down the X axis, okay? And you can see that it is, right? So you can rotate this thing however you want to. Uh, really... Like I said, it would be beneficial if you make sure that it's facing down the Y. Okay? And if it's not, once again, when you bring it in, you're like, oh, crap, this is not facing the right way. Well, it ain't the end of the world. You just re-import it. Same thing over again. And you just change it, you know, whichever way you need it to be. Like this one, I'm going to go ahead and put this back to 90 uh, in the Z and say import all. Now you can see that it's rotated the opposite direction, right? See? So this gun was made already facing down the Y-axis. So all I have to do is just import it, and I don't change anything, right? I leave everything uh, default because that's the way that it's actually facing. So that'll show you guys right there. You can rotate it if it's not facing the right way. Just rotate it when you import it, right? Okay, now as far as, uh, let's just go ahead and cover this since I mentioned it. Let's go ahead and cover what happens if it's a static mesh and not a skeletal mesh. How can you change that? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and re-export this gun. Actually, let's just do it this way, right? Um, let's just delete this, this import that I did. I'm going to go ahead and delete it completely and we're going to re-import it as a static mesh right now this is a skeletal mesh currently but I'm going to do some trickery here right so I'm going to take that it's a skeletal mesh this gun is a skeletal mesh it has a skeleton but I'm going to convert it into a static mesh now this is not what you want right this is not what you want you want it to be a skeletal mesh but I'm just going to show you guys that if you just uncheck skeletal and say import all, look what happens, right? It's now a static mesh. You see that? Unreal's cool like that, guys. So now it's a static mesh. Now, once again, you want these to be skeletal meshes. So let me show you what you can do here. You can do the opposite of that. So I'm going to go in here and say asset actions export, and I'm going to change this to uh, SM. Right, so now it is officially a static mesh. Okay. And now let's pretend for a moment that this is my weapon that I'm going to use. And it is not a skeletal mesh. And I need it to be a skeletal mesh. Check this out. So now we're going to say import. And this is the actual static mesh. See the file size difference? So I did actually convert it. I ripped the skeleton out of this thing. So now I'm going to say open. And this time around, you see it's got the little box right here you can check. I'm going to check skeletal, right? And I'm going to leave the skeleton blank because it's a static mesh. It don't have one. So I need it to create me one. And then I'm going to say import all. Now check this out. Now it's that exact same gun. But now it actually created a skeleton. And if we open it up, you can see that it just puts one single little bone in it. Right? Just enough to make it a skeletal mesh. It needs to be a skeletal mesh. Okay? It just needs to be one. So there you go. That's how you can convert them back and forth. Oh, God, you mean I got to take my static mesh and go make a freaking skeleton and skin it? No. 
You don't have to. Just do what I just showed you here, and you could convert a skeletal mesh into a non-skeletal mesh, static mesh, and you could do the vice versa of that, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and start this process over now that that's explained. And, you know, once again, I'm trying to be as thorough with these things as I possibly can to alleviate questions, and it gives everybody a lot of information about how you can manipulate this template if you've bought it, okay? All right, so here we go. We're going to start over, and this time we're going to move along here. So I'm going to take and import that gun mesh, the actual skeletal mesh one, and I'm going to leave all that default because we have no materials, and I'm going to say import all, okay? And now if I open this skeleton up, check it out. See, it actually had a skeleton in it, and we removed it, right? So I'm not joshing you here. You can uh, do that, okay? Unreal's cool like that. All right, so now that we actually have the gun in here, uh, pay attention here, guys, because this is important. It needs to have a socket on the end of the barrel, okay? Uh, and as you can see here, this does not have any sockets on it at all. So all I'm going to do is take the root bone. Remember, if it was a static mesh and we brought it in, and we converted it into a skeletal mesh, it only creates one little root bone, right? So we're going to pretend like this is that. Well, you just take your root bone, right-click, and say, add socket. And then I'm going to call this muzzle sock socket, just like that. Now we need to move it to the barrel, right? It, it's a muzzle socket, so it needs to go to the barrel of the gun. So we click this, and we just move it. Right? You can move these sockets wherever you want to independently of the bone. Okay, so I'm going to come down here to the end of the barrel. And, uh, yeah, we're going to put it right here like that. Okay. Now, there is one more thing we're going to talk about here in a minute, but I'm going to find this problem as it crops up. But to give you guys a heads up, this socket's facing the wrong direction. We need it to face down the Y also. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that, and we'll come back. I'll show you what problem that's going to cause here in a minute. Okay, so we got our muzzle socket on. Okay? And, um, you know, once again, this is just a demonstration, so this will not be in the project. I'm just showing you guys how you can do this. Okay? So... At this point now, we've got the skeletal mesh in here, and we need a blueprint, right? So we're going to go to the Masters folder here, and I'm going to take that Master Weapon Blueprint, I'm going to right-click this thing and say Create Child Blueprint. And I'm going to call it BPC for Blueprint Child underscore WEP for Weapon underscore FP Gun. That's the name of the gun, or... Uh, assault rifle or M16 or whatever, right? And I put done, not gun, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that because that'll drive me nuts. Okay, so now we've created our child blueprint and we just need to move it, right? We need to, I want that blueprint to be in the same folder the gun's in, so I'm going to say move here. Okay? And uh, now we're going to open that child blueprint and start making our gun. Now, this is the cool part about this template, guys, so pay attention here. This is smooth, right? So we don't have a mesh, right? And we want that weapon to use that mesh, right? This is our brand new shiny modeled weapon that we have. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to say FP gun, right? And compile it and save it. Now, right now, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, I'm going to show you guys now how you put that on the character, which is super simple, too, by the way. So now we go to the character's blueprint, right? We open up the blueprint. So we open up our master character blueprint. And in the class defaults, you can get to the class defaults by clicking here or this button here. You're going to see that there's two weapon slots. Now, the secondary weapon, uh, the pistol, that's only for a pistol, right? Because it's on the hip of the character. Uh, so this will go in the rifle socket. Right, because this is technically a rifle. So I'm going to change this over to the BPC Wep Gun Blueprint we just created. Just like that. And I'm going to compile this. 
and save it. Now we have it on the character. Wasn't that easy? Look at this. So now, you might not be able to see it. I'll have to come out here and eject. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Oh, actually, it's not attached to the character. It's on the ground. You see it there? But that's okay. We're going to go ahead and eject anyway. So I'm going to hold down Shift and mash F1. And then we're going to hit Eject. So we can come out of our character and look at it. So there's the gun. You see it laying down there on the ground? Now, why is it doing that? Well, the reason is because we didn't tell it what socket it attaches to. Okay. Uh, we just simply made our blueprint and went ahead and slapped it onto the character, but it needs to know which socket in the uh, character does it need to attach to, which is, you know, super simple. Uh, we simply open up. We're done with our character at this point, right? We've already got it on him, even though technically it's not. So we go back to our child blueprint, and we open this up, and you're going to see all these parameters. See, and if you're in full blueprint, you might not be, uh, you might be in here, right? Because this is where we put our mesh in. See it there? Uh, so once again, you can get to the class defaults by clicking here or here. And here's all those settings, right? So this is how we build a gun in Project MoCap, okay? So the weapon's name is going to be FP gun, right? That's the name of the gun. It would be M16 A4. Awesome gun. Weird buzz gun. Whatever, right? The name of the gun. Uh, the muzzle socket, remember that socket we put on the barrel of the gun? What did we call that? This name has to be identical to that. Don't send me hate mail. Pay attention, guys. Muzzle socket is what we named it. Now, weapon hand socket name, right? Now, on this character exists some sockets that are already created on the character, right? So we could go back to the character uh, under the UE4 mannequin mesh. We can open up this character skeleton, and I've pre-made you guys some sockets on this character, right? So if you scroll down through the list here... Um, Right here's one called Weapon Socket, and here's one called Weapon Socket 2, right? So there's actually two Weapon Sockets, and you might have more, depending on uh, how your weapon was modeled, right? And we'll talk about that maybe towards the end of the stream, okay? But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the Weapon Socket, okay? And that's how you can find the name of the, of the socket. You can come into your skeleton, open it up, and look at it, right? Here's the holster socket, right? It's called rifle holster socket. And then there's probably one for the pistol, right? That's the sockets that it uses when the weapon is holstered. See that? You shouldn't really ever have to change those, but you can, right? This, this project's fully editable. You can do whatever the hell you want to with it. Uh, but this is just how this is going to come set up by default. So, um... We're going to go ahead and tell it to just use the weapon socket, right? The weapon hand socket. We're going to say weapon socket. And for the weapon animation state, we're going to hit this and select rifle because it is a rifle weapon. Now we're going to stop here and we're going to compile this and save it. And now when we spawn back in here, hey, look at that. It's in his hand, right? So if I hit shift and F1 and we hit eject, now you're going to notice that it's actually in his hand, right? Because we actually told it the socket that it needs to attach to. Now, once again, guys, this is where you may have to come in here and add another socket or whatever. Because weapons are all different sizes, shapes, formats, and whatever. So, if you get a weapon lined up in one socket, well, if the next weapon you try to attach to that socket is not very similar, well, of course it ain't going to look right in the character's hand, right? There's no getting around that. So you might have to create yourself a new socket on your character and call it my new gun socket, right? Because you brought in a new gun and now all the weapon sockets that are already on the character are not lining up properly, right? So you create a new socket, you go in there and line the gun up. Let me show you what I mean by that. I said we'd cover it later. Let's do it as we do it, right? 
So how do you correct that? Well, we can open up this character skeleton. Um, it'd probably be a good idea to open an animation so that you can see it. We're going to do idle, and we're going to go to uh, stand aim idle. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and pause it. Now you can see that the preview that's currently in this character's hand is the one that comes in the mocap animations. Right? Do you see that? Let me go ahead and slow this down here. That's it. Well, what we need to do is we need to use a different socket because our weapon don't look right in that socket. Here's how you can tell. So if we come down here to where the M4 uh, weapon socket is, we can right-click this and delete it. That's just a preview. That's not the actual weapon in the character's hand. That's just a preview to let you line it up. So now if we take that weapon socket and we right click it and say add preview asset and this time around we add our FP gun as the preview, well you can see it's not quite held right in his hand. Right? You see it? Well now here's the problem. If you change it here, then every weapon that's already lined up to use this socket is going to be wrong because you readjusted it for this one. Right? So this is why you would add another weapon socket, okay? Because there's already a set of weapons in here that rely on that socket. So instead, we're going to delete it, and we're going to go to weapon socket 2, and let's add it here and see what it looks like, right? So we're going to add the uh, FP gun to this one, and let's see what it looks like. Okay, that's even worse, it looks like, okay? So this is where we would add a new socket, right? So I'm going to delete the preview. Don't delete the sockets, delete the preview. And I'm going to take that hand R web, right click, and I'm going to say add a socket just like we did uh, to our uh, muzzle, right? And I'm going to call this one my new gun socket, right? Whatever, rifle socket, M14 socket. Uh, M16 socket, right? Just something so that you'll know that that's for that specific gun or that specific quote-unquote type of gun, the way it's held, right? So now I can right-click my new gun socket, and I'm going to go ahead and add a preview asset, which is that FP gun, right? Now you can see that, oh, wow, well, that one's worse than any of them. Well, this is the trick guys you can now take this right and you can line this up independently so we could go in here let's turn all of our snaps off uh we already got our camera slowed down so let's go in here and let's really hone this thing in all right so i'm going to move that up i'm going to bring it down some so that his finger is actually in there right and, and you know you might have to fiddle with this some to get it to look exactly right Right, so I'm going to back it up. His finger's clipping through the trigger. Let's go ahead and pull this down a little bit. Right. Now, his left hand here is really foobard. Right. Now, this may come with a fabric node in the animation blueprint where you can freely move his left hand wherever you want it to be. Or it may not. I may leave it for you guys. But really, guys, all you have to do is create a fabric node in the animation blueprint and then you can freely move this left hand forward up down back right whatever and it'll adjust it in real time right so i might provide you guys with a link or whatever uh for somebody who's made a tutorial about that but you would just do that right and, and you know this is not meant to be a completed game in the first place this is only a template for you guys to start from so there's a lot of things in here that i didn't add on purpose right you guys go at it. If you want to move his left hand around, you go at it, right? But anyway, that's the gist of it. And now that we did that, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, show you guys real quick. So now that we did that, um, we need to tell it to use that new gun socket, right? So this would be my new gun socket, right? So we changed the name of the socket, compile it and save it. And now when we spawn in here, it's actually using that new weapon socket, which is more right than the other one was, even though his left hand is still jacked up, okay? So if I hit F, 
uh, shift F1 here and we eject out, now you can see, uh, you know, that adjustment that we made is there, right? See his left hand or his uh, right hand. But once again, you guys will have to fiddle with that, okay? Uh, with a fabric node. And it's not hard to do. Takes probably all of five damn minutes to put a fabric node on. Okay? Now, here comes the fun part of this. The actual creation of the gun. So, see, we got a gun, but when we shoot, it don't do anything. Right? All we did was just get it attached to the character. That's it. So, you can see it says it has no ammo or anything. But the name of the gun's showing up. Look underneath the health bar. Remember that name that we put in there? It shows up. So, if you want to name it My Awesome Gun, you could name it My Awesome Gun. And it'll show up as that in the UI. Right? Okay. So now, uh, we're going to go ahead and open up that child blueprint again, and we're going to continue down our merry little way here, okay? Now, what do we want this thing to be? I mean, literally, you can make this be whatever you want it to be. That's how cool this blueprint is, guys. What do you want it to be? Do you want it to be a grenade launcher? Do you want it to be a rocket launcher? Do you want it to be a, uh automatic weapon? Or do you want it to be single fire only? Do you want it to be burst fire? Do you want it to be a beam gun like a flamethrower? You decide. What do you want it to be? Right? So we're going to start out with a simple single fire weapon. Now look. Right here where it says firing mode. Do you see that? Hit that drop down. Look at that. That's your different firing modes. Right? What do you want it to be? Well, we're going to, in this instance, just make it a single-fire weapon, right? Since it's a single-fire weapon, that means we don't have to fool with any of this burst-per-shot thing, right? That's only for burst-fire weapons. Multi-fire, that's only for multi-fire weapons, like shotguns, etc., etc. Does it have a scope or not? Yes or no? You tick a box right here, and you can tell it, it has a scope. Let me show you what that does. I'm going to check that box... I'm going to compile it and save it. And now when I pop in here and I'm in aiming mode, watch what happens when I mash the middle mouse button. Look at that. Now watch what happens if I turn that off. This is how, this blueprint's kick ass, guys. Look, I'm going to uncheck it, compile it and save it. Now when I come back in here and I go into aiming mode, I press my middle mouse, look, no scope. So we can even determine whether the weapon we're creating has a scope or not with a checkbox, guys. How cool is that? All right. So we're going to say that it doesn't have a scope. Is it a projectile weapon or a hit scan weapon? The question that everyone wants to know. This blueprint is capable of making both. You can make hit scan weapons with it or you can use projectiles. And we'll talk about the master projectile blueprint in a moment, okay? So for now, we're just going to say it's going to be a hit scan weapon. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means we don't have to plug in a projectile, right? Sphere trace radius. That is the radius of the trace that comes out of this gun. How big is your bullet going to be? That's what this is asking you right here. Well, we're going to say that it is uh, two. Right? Whatever that is in Unreal Units. Rate of fire. It is not an automatic fired weapon, so we don't have to put anything in there. What's the range of the weapon? We're going to say that it's 4,000 by default. And we'll talk about this a little bit as we go through this. We're going to create two or three different kinds of weapons, all from this one mesh, just to really drive home and demonstrate what this blueprints all about what it's capable of doing etc etc okay spread how much spread is this weapon going to have well we're just going to say that it has 50 cooldown well since this is not an auto fired weapon it's a single fire weapon every time you squeeze the trigger it shoots this is asking you how often do you want those shots to be do you want them to be able to fire that gun as quick as they can left click? Or do you want to make him have to put a little pause in between it? Right? That's what it's asking for. So I'm just going to say that this thing has a 0.6 delay. Right? Max ammo. How much total ammo do you want in this gun? 
We're going to say that it has 75. Yeah, I put 756. 75. How much is in the clip? What's the clip size of the gun going to be? Oh, uh, we're going to say that it has 25 in a clip. Okay? Now, just by doing that and uh, checking one more checkbox, is hit scan, we should now be able to fire this weapon. Theoretically. Uh, you might not be able to see it uh, because we're going to turn on here. Let's just go ahead and do this because you guys might need to see this. And this will likely be put into the class defaults. But for now, we're going to go to the master weapon blueprint. That's where all these weapons come from. And I'm just going to turn this on because we're going to need to talk about this so that I can explain it better uh, about what that sphere trace radius does. So I'm going to turn on the... Uh, draw debug for duration so that you guys can see this okay so now let's go back in here and shoot now you can see that it's drawing the line so technically at this point right here we're actually firing that gun you see that and you're also going to see where the traces are coming from which is above this character's head but they go to wherever your crosshair is pointed right that's your accuracy of your weapon now, you remember me talking about the spread of the weapon? Watch what happens when I shoot that wall. You see, it's not hitting in exactly the same spot every single time. You see that? So now, if we go back into that child blueprint, not the master, the actual child, and we screw around with that spread, check this out. I'm going to raise that up to 100. This is the spread of the weapon. I have it in here manually. No, it don't have recoil. No, it don't change the spread as you're holding the weapons button down. It's a basic template, guys. If you want to add that, the logic's already in here, right? You just got to go tie into it and make it do it, right? So now you can see when I left click, it's it's got a bigger spread ratio, right? Now that radius that I'm talking about, that's the size of the bullet, right? So you can see, you see how skinny that is? That's to mimic the size of the projectile for hit scan weapons, right? So if we wanted to, we could go in here and crank this up to something ridiculous, right? So spread, uh, let's go ahead and just put that back down to 50, I guess. And let's take our uh, sphere trace radius and let's change this to 25, right? Now we've got some big, humongous projectiles flying out of this thing. So... Uh, Let's go back outside here so you guys can see this. And we're going to do that same thing again. We're going to shoot the wall. Bam. Now look how big around. That's how big your projectile would be if you set it to 25. Right? That's to mimic the size of the projectile. That's why I use a sphere trace instead of a line trace. So you can actually dictate how big your projectile is. Okay? So, of course, naturally, this is going to be something pretty small. Right? Unless you're building some kind of cray-cray weapon. right? Uh, so we're going to go in here and set this back down to, oh, I don't know. Let's just go with five and see how big that is. Okay? And I got these trace debuggers on purposefully so you can see it. So see there, that's still a pretty big-ass projectile. Right? So let's go ahead and bump it down to something small, like two. Uh, trace, sphere trace radius two. Okay. All right. So now uh, we're ready to move on and start finishing up this weapon. Okay. So I'm pretty comfortable with that being the size of the uh, bullet. Yeah, that'll be all right. That'll be fine. Right. Okay. So now let's go ahead and carry on with this. So where did we leave off at? Well, we were down here in our hit scan weapon config. So we check the box here to say that it is, in fact, a hit scan weapon. Now, let me show you guys the difference while we're on this subject. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that and compile this and save it. Well, now when I come in here and shoot, it's still going to draw the line traces, but it don't know anything beyond that, right? So we can't put damage in. We can't do anything. But let's say, for example, instead we want this to be a projectile weapon. Now, I've got a master weapon projectile in here, and I've also went ahead and created a couple uh, little default projectiles that'll come with this template. So you remember way back up here where it was asking for a projectile? Now we actually need to put one in here. 
right? Because it, it's going to be a projectile weapon instead. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the shotgun projectile as a demonstration here. Uh, one of the projectiles I have already created. Now look what happens when I shoot. You see the projectile flying off in the distance? See it? You might not be able to see it with the line trace on. At this point, all the line trace is doing is telling the projectile where to go. That's it. It's not dealing any damage through the hit scan. The projectile still has a travel time. You see how the line drew instantly, but you can see the projectile flying off into the distance at whatever speed the projectile's set to go at. You see that? But we'll come back to that in a minute. I just wanted to show you guys that's the difference and why I say this blueprint can do both. If you tell it it's going to be a hit scan weapon, here's the difference, okay? So now uh, it's going to be a hit scan weapon, so we can even we can leave that in there uh, if you want to. But I'm going to go ahead and set it back to none. The moment that you check it is a hit scan weapon, even if there's a projectile in here, it's not going to load it. It's not going to shoot it, right? This is like a manual override. Okay, so now since we've told it it's a hit scan weapon, guys, pay attention here. Hit scan weapons, the trace of the weapon is what deals the damage and spawns the impact effect and the sound effect. If it's a projectile weapon, the projectile is in charge of dealing the damage, playing the particle effect, playing the sound effect, okay? Burn that in you guys' mind. So now that we have set this to be a hit scan weapon, we need to dictate what kind of damage is it going to be. Is it going to be bullet damage or is it going to be AOE damage? That's what it's asking you right here. So for now, we're going to say it's bullet damage. Okay? Uh, bullet weapons have the ability to do critical damage. If you don't want it to have a critical damage, meaning if you shoot somebody in the head... That's what this is asking you right here. If you don't want it to have any, you can't leave that set to zero, right? And I might just change this into an override at some point. But for now, if you don't want it to have critical damage, you put a one in it. One times whatever the damage is, is one. Or is that amount. Two would be it would do double damage. Three would be it would do three times as much damage. That's what this critical damage value is, okay? Um, also, all these weapons, the projectile and the hit skin weapon, is set up to do a random damage. You're not going to be doing the same amount of damage every shot, unless you want it to. That's what this minimum and maximum, max and minimum damage is. If you want it to use the randomness, you put in two values. What's the max amount of damage this thing can do per shot? Ten. What's the minimum amount that it can do? Oh, I don't know. Five. What does that mean? That means that this weapon will do no more than ten damage per shot and no less than five. And it will pick a, a random amount in between these two numbers and deal that amount of damage to your character. Right? That's what this means. If you don't want that effect, you just simply put the same number in both places. Now it will do 10 damage every shot. Right? So see there, it's not a huge deal. Once that, uh, you know, I've pointed that out. I love to do the random damage because I don't like predictability in my game. I want it to have a little randomness. If you shoot somebody in the hand, it shouldn't do as much damage as if you shoot them in the heart, right? So without going in there and defining every single body part's damage amount, this is a way that you can mimic that kind of an effect. Now granted, you might shoot them in the heart, and it might do the minimum amount, but it still gives it a randomness instead of, oh, 25 damage, 25 damage, 25 damage. Every shot, same amount of damage every time. I don't like that. I hate that. So this is what I put in here to change that. Okay? Now, guys, pay attention here. I'm taking you guys to school here. If you tell this that it is explosive damage, you have to tell it what the area of effect is. This has no effect 
on bullet damage. None. Right? So we'll come back and talk about AOE weapons in a minute. Just keep that in mind. That's what this is. Area, hit scan area of effect. Yes, you can give hit scan weapons AOE in this template. Yes. Okay? Uh, but we're not going to do that for now. Once again, we're going to fiddle around with this. Once we get the basic weapon made, we're going to come back and fiddle around with a bunch of stuff. Okay? I just want to, you know, run through these uh, in the beginning here, and then we'll come back and change some stuff. Okay? Uh, hit scan default impact sound. I've got two. I've got this set up to do a default sound and a body shot. Right? If you guys want to expand your physical material library, you'll be free to do so, but it's only going to come with two. Everything that you shoot that is not a character is going to play this default sound effect and particle. If you shoot a character, it will play a different sound effect and it will do a blood spatter. Right? That's all it's coming with. No more. You can add it. The foundation's already laid. You just got to go in there and, you know, get more decal effects and more sound effects and add to it, right? But I'm not building a full game here for you guys. It's a template. And it's a good template. And it's a kick-ass template to start from to build your own third-person game. Or first-person, even. You could go in there and change all that around. All right, so the default sound is just going to be impact concrete, right? Uh, the particle, the default one, is going to be the Assault Rifle IH, which is instant hit. Character, right? What sound effect is it going to play when it impacts a character? Remember, I told you it comes with two. There's the flesh sound. What impact uh, particle is it going to spawn when you shoot someone? Right? This is a, a, a bullet, P-body bullet impact. Okay? All right. Now, just by doing that, we're going to pause here because I'm going to get a drink and stuff. Uh, we're going to pause here. Now look, what we just done, now look what we're able to do. You see and hear the sound effect and the blood spatter? Now look when we shoot the ground. Completely different effect. So it does have that. It's just got two. You guys will have to add more to it. But we're also dealing damage at this point, right? Watch, you'll die. Look, I just killed it. See there? See that? All right. So let me go ahead and light me a smoke here. This is going to be a pretty lengthy video, guys, because this blueprint is super powerful. Okay? I mean, literally, you can build your weapon. front. And see, here's the cool part about this. All you're having to do is fill out those class defaults. You don't have to go in there and add nodes. You don't have to go in there and, uh, you know, change values manually. That's the beauty of this template. I have made it so idiot-proof a caveman could do it, literally. You just go in there and fill out your class defaults, and you have a weapon, right? All right, so let's carry on with this endeavor here. Um... I'm going to go ahead and uh, now that I explained what this trace sphere radius and stuff is, um, you know what? Actually, I'm going to go ahead and leave that on because we do want to talk about a little something else here a little bit more towards the end of this. All right, so now we're to the effects section, okay? What's the dry fire sound? When you're out of ammo and you squeeze the trigger, what sound effect does it play? Well, I have one in here already that this template will come with called Empty. Okay? Once again, you guys can bring in your own sound effects and plug them in. As long as they're sound cues, right, you can just plug them right in here. Okay? What's the muzzle flash of this weapon? Now, this is the one that I wanted to come back and talk about because of that socket we put on the gun. Remember the first of this video where we put a muzzle socket on? This is going to be where you guys are going to see that it's broken. Okay? And we'll talk about it. So I'm just going to put on the uh, assault rifle muzzle flash. And we're going to pause right here and compile and save this. So now when I shoot this gun, you can't, you can't really see the muzzle flash, but we're going to fix that, right? So let's go up here and we're going to go to two players. 
<coughs> and we're going to play in a new editor window. Now, remember, this is all replicating for multiplayer, too, by the way. Okay, so that's another bonus of this template. Yes, it is for multiplayer. Okay? So, let me go ahead and bring this dude out here. Uh, I think I just went out of the wrong side of the building, but whatever. Okay, now watch the muzzle flash on the end of this gun. Okay, it's firing straight. Well, I guess it is firing straight, so maybe it ain't an issue after all. I thought that the muzzle socket would be rotated wrong and we would have to turn it. But I guess not, right? So it is it is flashing the correct direction. Maybe it's the client that'll be backwards. No? They're fine. All right, so scratch what I said about there would likely be an issue with a muzzle flash. Apparently not. Okay? Yeah, it's firing properly, okay? All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this back to one screen just so that you guys can see this better. Uh, and then selected viewport. All right. So now we have our muzzle flash on it. Okay. So let's go ahead and keep filling this out here. Single fire sound. This is going to be the assault rifle cue. Auto fire shot in sound. Is this an auto fire weapon, guys? Yes or no? No. So it's not. So we don't have to put anything in there. Okay. Equip weapon sound. What sound is it going to play when you switch weapons? Basically, is what this is asking. Because there is technically no equip and unequip, right? So, what sound effect is it? Uh, well, it would be the assault rifle equip stereo. You could use the mono one if you want to. Reload sound. Right? You can come in here and type reload. Well, let's go ahead and use the uh, assault rifle reload stereo sound. Okay, now we can come in here and now check out what all we have built onto our weapon already. Right? Reload. I heard the sound, but I didn't see no animation. Well, we ain't got to the animation yet. You can even tell it what animation it uses. Right? I heard the sound, but I didn't see it. Now, if we press Q, watch this. It didn't play an animation, but it played the sound effect. Now watch when we come back. This pistol ought to have an animation. Right? So see there? We don't have, we haven't put our animations in yet. Okay? So let's keep going down the chain here. Chain, chain, chain. Just follow the chain, guys. Literally. Okay? So what uh, firing animation is this weapon going to use? Well, it's a rifle. Right? So rifle... Uh, which one is this? Weapon Stand Fire Montage. So this would be um, Rifle Relaxed. Oh, wait a minute. This is uh, this is the Stand Fire. This would just be uh, the Fire animation. So this is the Standing version. So we would find Rifle Single Fire. Right? Then it has a Crouch version as well. Right, so we come over here and say, okay, this is a RIF for rifle. We need the crouch fire. Right, so where is that? Oh, look, crouch single fire. Weapon aim put away. Right, in the aiming mode, we would type put, put away. This is the rifle aim put away. See that? Plug it in. Relaxed put away. Uh... Put, rife, relaxed, put away, right? Then we got retrieve animations. So one is to put the weapon away, and the other one is to bring it back. We want those animations, right? So we're simply plugging them in here. These are montages that I pre-created that'll come in this template, okay? So we need retrieve, aim, retrieve. And we need relaxed retrieve. You see how easy this is, guys? I mean, come on here. This is so easy. Literally, a caveman could do it. It's plug and play. <laughs> you can't get much easier than that. So this would be uh, rifle relaxed retrieve. Aim reload, right? So this would be uh, rifle, R-I-F, aim reload. See it there? Bam. 
relaxed reload. So this would be R I F. Rifle, uh, relaxed reload, right there. Bam. Compile it and save it. Now look what all we just did here. Now we actually have put aways animation. See it playing? Now this is still just a placeholder animation, by the way. Uh, the guys at MoCap are supposed to be delivering me some new animations here in the next couple of days. So, once again, guys, this is still a little bit of a work in progress, but I wanted to go ahead and start making these videos to get ahead so that I won't have to come back and in, in a day make 12 videos. Okay? So, see there? We now have our put away and retrieve, which these will be better once I get the proper ones. And it's for both relaxed and aiming. So, see there? When I'm aiming, it plays a different one. Right? We now have our firing animation. You can barely see it, but it is playing. We now have our reload animation. See it? And our sound effects. And we have it for both re aiming and relaxed. So if I shoot one and now I reload here. See? It's doing the relaxed version of the reload. Okay? So let's go ahead and check now and see what else we got to do here. I think we're about done, actually. So, uh, this one right here that says do not set variables, seriously, don't set these variables. You don't have to. These are some variables that are used in the calculation of ammo uh, or some various other checks. Don't set them. Literally, don't set them. You can even collapse that. Don't set those. Uh, replication, we don't have, that's it. We've done it. We have successfully brought in a weapon model and built a weapon. Right? Using this blueprint that comes in this project. That easy. We didn't make a single node. We didn't create a single node. We didn't connect a single line. We didn't do any of that. Right? Now, granted, it's just a single fire weapon. Right? But now let's go manipulate this bad boy. Right? I told you guys you can create any kind of weapon under the sun that you could possibly imagine. And I mean that. Just by manipulating those variables that we just filled out, right? So now, uh, let's go in here and say, okay, screw this. We don't want a single fire gun. We, at this point, now want this to be an auto fire weapon. How do we do that, John Galt? Am I going to have to go in here and make a thousand nodes? Absolutely not, guys. Check this out. Remember this firing mode? We're going to change it to auto fire. Now that we did that, is there anything else that we, we're going to have to do to make this be an auto-fire weapon? Yes or no? Yes. Right? Uh, what's this say right here? Auto-fire sound loop. It needs to have a looping sound. So we select that. And right here underneath the sound, we need to put in the uh, assault rifle loop. Uh, yeah, that didn't, that totally didn't bring up what I was looking for. Uh, rifle. Um, is there one actually called loop? Please be one called loop. Uh, and make sure you use cues for this too, guys. There's the wave files in here too, but there, we need to use the cue. Maybe I could just type rifle Let's just type Q. I mean, there's a lot of shit in here, guys. Sometimes it's hard to find all this stuff. Well, that's going to bring up every Q under the sun. Uh, let's see here. Rifle. Rifle. Come on now. Work with me here. I know it's in here. Shot. Is there not one just... Here it is. Okay, so there's the shot loop. We just need the uh, Q, right? So, assault rifle shot loop Q. There it is. Okay. Now we've got our uh, shot loop in it, but watch this. Look how fast it went through all that ammo. Why? Why, John Gall, this template's a piece of crap. Why did it do that? Well, We've just changed this weapon into an auto-fire weapon, so chances are, in the class defaults, there's probably some other stuff we need to do, right? Uh, one of them would be, now this thing actually needs a rate of fire. We don't want it to be zero, so let's put in something like 1.1 1 
two, right? Now, just by making that one little minor modification, look what happens here. Hey, that's a little better, right? But look how abruptly the sound stops when we stop firing. Why does it do that? Anybody got any ideas? Anybody at all? You remember that variable in here that said shot end? Remember that? Do you guys remember seeing that in here anywhere? Let's scroll back down through here. Oh, look at that. Auto fire shot end. Let's type end. Shot end assault rifle. Auto fire weapons use a loop and they have to play an end sound. That little trail out into the distance sound. Now watch this. Hear that end sound now? It don't abruptly stop anymore. How about that? Right? Now what else do you suppose might be different? How about the animation for the weapon firing? Remember we just put in a single fire uh, animation. You remember that? Now it might still do it and look, but it only plays it, it plays it really fast. Do you guys see that? Let me go ahead and go back into, uh, uh, let's, let's go back into, um, multiplayer mode here so that you guys could check this out. So let's go back to new editor window. All right, where is this guy? Oh, he's in the building. Let me bring him outside actually so you guys can see. I'll bring the server. The left screen is the server, the right screen is the client. All right, so let me get over here where you guys can see this. Now watch when he shoots the weapon. Well, you see there, that don't match worth a damn. Well, why is that? Well, it's because we're using a single fire animation and it's playing the same animation over and over. Looks like crap. So in our class defaults, you remember where we plugged in all of our animations at right here? Check this out. Weapon stand fire. Uh, there is one in here for continuous fire, uh, rifle, uh, weapon crouch fire. We need to change that to be crouch continuous fire. Now check this out. Now let's do that exact same test again and you guys see if you notice the difference here. Okay, I think he's up here. Where the hell is he? There he is. I'm playing with myself. All right, so now let's do that same test again. All right, now watch the right-hand screen. Now watch the firing animation. Oh, look at that. Much better, right? There's our dry fire sound when we're out of ammo. Reload. All right, so there you have it. We just created an auto-fire weapon. Now, once again, we can still mess around with all those spread settings and all that stuff. I'm just showing you guys how to go through the firing modes. You guys can number punch until Jesus comes back. Till you get it tweaked in just like you want it, okay? I, I've not got time for that. I'm not going to sit here and try to balance these, okay? So that's how you would make an auto-fire weapon. Now let's say we want to do something different, right? So we're going to go in here and say, okay, this is now going to be a burst fire. Now, if we just do that and compile this and save it, watch what happens. Okay, it's all weird, right? See that? It's playing the fire in sound. Right, well, we don't want that. So, what's wrong with this thing? Well, we need to go in here and adjust some stuff, right? So for one, it's not an auto-fire weapon at this point, right? So we can clear that out. Just set it to clear. Um, in our class defaults, uh, we don't need that shot in sound anymore because it's not an auto-fire weapon, right? So we could come back in here to uh, shot in sound. We can set that back to default, which is none, right? Now let's see what we accomplished. Okay, that's more like what we're after, right? But it only shot one time and now it won't shoot anymore. So we're still not done yet. Okay, so what else? Do you remember up here at the top of this, I told you guys that we could skip some of these because they didn't pertain to the particular weapon we were creating? You guys remember that? Look at that. Burst 
fire shots per burst. How many shots per burst is this going to do? Let's just do three, right? Now, with that one simple little change there, let's go see what happens. Hey, look at that. Now we could shoot three bursts per shot. Squeeze the trigger one time and it shoots three bursts. See that? And see how fast we can shoot those three bursts? Let me show you guys the other adjustments for a burst rifle. All right, so uh, let me reload here. Now the ammo's not gonna match, right? It needs to be, the ammo needs to be in whatever multiples the bursts are. So if it's three, your ammo should be in three, three, six, nine, 15, that way, right? Okay, all right, so now let's say that I want to speed the rate of fire of the burst up. Look at this, rate of fire is point, uh, 0 0.12. Let's change that to point 0.8. Now watch what this setting changes. Uh, I think I just punched in the wrong numbers. Did I put 1.2? Uh, rate of fire is... Oh, yeah, I did. That's super slow. This needs to be something like point zero eight. Let's try that. I'm trying to speed the bursts up, not slow them down. So... Hey, that's a little faster. See how fast the bursts are? I'm not talking about the time in between bursts. I'm talking about the bursts themselves. See there? So see there? There's one adjustment for the burst rifle. And we could go in there and change it to point two. Now watch what happens to the burst. It slows them way down, right? See there how slow they are? Now, we probably broke the animation, right? Because this this should use the single fire animation, probably. I think there's some continuous fire ones in here. I don't remember, though. Oh, that still looks okay. All right, so you can leave it set to continue. Now, the other setting is how often can you fire the burst, right? Well, which one of these do you guys suppose is in control of that? Huh? How about cool down, right? So if we change that to 1.2, now we can't squeeze the trigger as often, meaning the burst cannot be fired as often, right? So now if I spam the left mouse button, see how slow it is? And you can speed both of those parameters up, okay? All right, so that's really it when it comes to a burst fire. Now let's say we go, all right, fine, we're done with the burst fire. All right, so we're going to make a multi-fire. John Gall, what does multi-fire mean? What does it mean? Shotgun weapons, guys. Any weapon that you want to shoot more than one projectile per button squeeze, like a shotgun, right? So now that we're not doing a burst fire anymore, we can set that back to default, right? And now we're going to make a shotgun. So we selected multi-fire, and we're going to say that it does... Six shots, six pellets per burst. Now, just by doing that, let's go see what happens here. So now when I shoot, look at that. Now, of course, the spread's super tight. Uh, and I think I just broke it. How did I do that? All right, well, fine, whatever. Uh, let's change that to, um, let's change the spread to something pretty big, like 150, right? Because shotguns are supposed to have a bunch of spread, right? So let's go uh, try that and see what happens. There we go, that's got a little bit more spread. See the dots on the wall over there? 
Now let's change it and give it even more spread. So really, the two settings that you would mess, well, there's three, technically. Um, the cooldown, that's how often can you shoot. So we'd say uh, one, uh, let's just make it point eight. So that's how often we can squeeze the trigger. Um, the radius, right, and you can mess with this on all weapons. So let's change that to 250. Let's give this thing a lot more spread. And you can mess with the pellets, right? So that's shooting six. Let's just make it do four instead. And we'll compile and save this. And now let's go back in here and shoot. See there how much bigger the spread is? See that? And of course, the further away you get, the worse it's going to get. Look at that. Now remember, this is a hit scan weapon still. Right? So that would be an instant hit right there. Okay? Alright, now the one final firing mode that I want to show you guys is burst fire. Or I mean uh, stream fire. So that's really a shotgun. You know, you can fool with those couple of settings there and you can tweak it in however you want it to be. Okay? So the final thing that I want to show is multi or uh, stream fire. So if we come in here and we change this to stream fire, right? Uh, it's now no longer multi fire. So we can go ahead and put that back to default, which is zero. Um, the rate of fire is relevant to this gun because it is technically an auto fire weapon even though it's a modification of an auto fire weapon okay so the rate of fire is pertinent to this so I'm gonna change this to point one um, that also means that now we need to put our auto fire sound loop back in right so uh, rifle now this is gonna be a little weird because uh, well, I'll just show you guys, but this is going to be a little weird. Beam weapons, you know, you, you guys will see what this is here in a minute. And I don't have any sound effects for it other than, you know, some crap I put in here. Uh, uh, some default stuff that's in here. So you guys like to have your own cool sound effects. Where the hell is that? I probably passed it up already by now. Uh, shot loop Q. All right, so we got to put our shot loop back in. Um, and then if we go back to our class defaults, uh, that also means we're going to need to put our shot in sound back in right here. End. Okay. Now, you guys ain't going to notice any difference between this and an auto fire weapon, right? Right? See that? But here's what makes it different. So now if we come in here and over here on the left, you see this stream fire tracer? I created a couple crappy particle effects for you guys to use just to get the gist of this weapon across. So if we select that and come over here and we put in a beam, I think I call these things beam, uh, test beam two, right? And we come in here, compile and save it. Now look at the difference here. Did I mash play? Play. Look at the beam going off into the distance. You might not be able to see it. Come over here. Come over here, Mr. Server, and have a look at this. Okay, it don't look like it's coming from the right place. So, more than likely... Uh, this is the wrong particle effect, probably. Probably, maybe. So let's go back in here and uh, let's do... Uh, maybe it was this P-Toot beam. One of these is uh, right and one of them is wrong. Right? And it's got to do with the starting and the end point. Alright, maybe this is the right one. Sorry about that, guys. But, you know, once again, this is still a bit of a work in progress. And I've been banging this thing for days now okay or weeks now actually so let's see what okay so this one's actually the correct one so maybe I need to remove them that are not the right ones just to save confusion so now you'll see that that tracer starts at the end of the barrel and goes to wherever it hits 
Let me reload here. Now you see how it's jumping all over the place? Why is it doing that? Well, it's because it's got a lot of spread. Right? So really you would want this kind of weapon to have little if any spread. So we go back to our class defaults here. And um, under the spread, I'm going to set that to absolute zero. Okay? And let's compile and save this again. Oh, crap. I didn't mean to maximize that. I'm running out of gas here, guys, and we still got the projectiles to cover. Yeah. Uh, I may save that for another video, actually, and break it out into a specific video of its own. Uh, all right. Come outside, Mr. Server. All right. So now... See, it's not jumping around anymore at this point. Now, see, here's another instance where you might want to thicken up that trace, right? Because here's the uh, weird thing, right? So you remember how small this projectile is? Watch what happens when I shoot the server. Or I shoot the client. Look, the beam's actually going through his head. Through his body. Right? Well, that's because the trace is so small. Right, so how do we fix that? Well... This is where you'd go in here and you'd actually bump that trace radius up, okay? So you would go to, uh, where the hell is that? It's in here somewhere. Uh, sphere trace radius. You'd bump that up to something like, oh, I don't know, 25. You would want that to be the, as thick as the beam, basically, right? So now that's, that's pretty big, but if we come back out here... Uh, let's see. Come out here, Mr. Server. Alright. Let's go find him. Where the hell is he? Oh, he's this way. Alright, so now what will happen is, is that phenomenon shouldn't exist, right? So now if I shoot near him, well, we're still going through him a little. But not as bad as it was, right? So now we can kind of you know, fatten that projectile up just so that it doesn't look quite as derpy. Alright, so see now if I shoot near him, see it's hitting him. But if I go up above him, you see? So there you go. That's, that's another reason for the sphere craze. So now it'll make it a lot easier to hit with this weapon at a distance. Right, so see. And I'm leaving these debuggers on on purpose so that you guys can see how this works uh, and how it uh, is helpful, okay? So, there you go. That's technically it, right? That's, that's pretty much how you create weapons using this template. Now, once again, we didn't cover the projectiles, but I think maybe I'll leave that in a video of its own because it's got, it's got just about as much uh, <laughs> information as this does, right, to create projectiles. But once again, all you have to do is fill these defaults out, right? You don't have to do any coding or any more scripting. It's already done for you guys. Okay, now the one final thing that I want to talk about before I end this video is the range. Okay? Now here's the deal, guys. This is the range of the trace. And now you guys know that that range... It's for hit scan weapons, and it also affects projectile weapons, right? Because that line trace is telling the projectile where to go. So if the line trace don't hit anything, it tells the projectile to go to wherever the line trace ends at, okay? So what does that mean exactly? Well, um... Let me go ahead and switch to uh, one of these weapons, right? So uh, we'll talk about that too, uh, how you would put them into the uh, weapon station uh, in another video. Uh, maybe I'll put the projectiles and those two together, right? Because all, we, all I showed you guys is how to create a weapon and put it on the character. <clears throat> well, they also have to be added to this station if you want to use them, right? Because now, number one gives you an assault rifle. Number two gives you a burst rifle, number three, a shotgun, and number four is a, a beam gun, right? So that new weapon that we created, it's not in here, 
right? We have to put that in there if we want it in there. So currently, the only way you can get your new gun is when you first spawn in. See how it says FP gun? Right? So those have to be added. Any new weapon that you create that you want access to in this station, you have to add it to the station's blueprint, right? It has to be added into the logic of that. And I only have this set up to hold five weapons, and those five weapons are the ones that it's going to come with. I'm only showing you guys how to create new weapons. You can take any of these weapons that are already in here, right? Whether it's... Um, whether it's the assault rifle, you can manipulate all those parameters and all those settings just like I just showed you. You can do the same for each one of these weapons, okay? But here's what I want to talk about with the range. I've got it set to 4,000, so you can see it starts there and it ends there. That's as far as this weapon will shoot. So see, I can't hit that mountain over there. You see that? Simply can't hit it. Well, what if I want the range to go that far? Well, I have to go in here and actually change the range, right? So if I change this to 8,000 instead of 4,000, now look what effect that has, okay? Now, same test, right? So we'll come back out here and I want to shoot that ridge. Let me get the, uh... oh crap, that's the beam gun, right? That's the one that I manipulated. So, can we actually hit it from here? I don't know. So, listen. Now you can see it starts back here, and it goes over there. So, apparently, yes, we're hitting it from here. It might be easier. Let me go in here and uh, actually change this FP gun's particle effect uh, for impact. I'm going to put this to something that we can actually freaking see way over there. So uh, to do that, um, we simply go to the hit scan section here. And for the default impact sound or particle, I'm going to change that to the explosion particle. So now we should be able to see that a lot better. Now, it's going to look like it has AOE, but does it? Guys, let me ask you a question. It's got this particle, but does it actually have AOE? Yes or no? The answer to that is no. Why? Because in our defaults, right, we didn't come in here and say that it has explosive damage. Now that we did do that, now does it have AOE? Yes or no? The answer is no. Why? Because we didn't tell it what the area of effect is. 250, right? Now, does it have AOE? Yes or no? Yes, right? So see there, guys? You know, I can't write out a complete description of how you use this to the exact T. But if you guys watch this video and you pay attention, it's pretty self-explanatory what this stuff is and how you manipulate it and change it, okay? All right, so now let's go back in here and let's do our same test again. Can I hit that from here? And the answer is yes. You see the explosions over there? Can't hear it, but I can see it, right? So that's how you adjust the range of this weapon. Right, but you wouldn't want that to be, you know, where you could shoot across the entire map. You know, weapons ought to have ranges on them, okay? All right, uh, so there you go. That's how you adjust and manipulate the range of the weapon. Now remember, this affects projectile and hit scan. So for example, if you want a projectile weapon to be able to hit things that far away, accurately, you're going to have to make your line trace first to be able to hit that distance. Because then, boom, now it knows to tell the projectile to go to where that line trace hit. Right? That's your accuracy of your weapon. Now, if you don't hit anything, it's just going to tell the projectile to go to wherever the line trace ends. Right? So it'll 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 hurl that projectile in that direction towards where that line trace ended at. But if you want it to have any kind of accuracy whatsoever, you have to make sure that your line trace, even with a projectile weapon, is still has enough range to hit whatever it is you're trying to hit so that it knows where to tell that projectile to go, okay? 
All right, and uh, with that, uh, I'm going to leave it at that. This is where I'm going to end this video at. I feel like I've covered the weapon creation system very well, and there will be another video that will be specifically about the projectiles, right? Because here's what I'm talking about. In the projectiles folder, look at this. We have a master projectile blueprint, okay? And it's got just as many settings really see them over here in the class defaults there's well I, I guess maybe there's not quite as many maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration but it's got configuration too right so that you can create many different kinds of projectiles okay so between the combination of the weapons blueprint and the projectile blueprint you can quite literally create any kind of a possibility of a weapon hit scan or projectile base that you could think of, just about, right? And so in the next video, we'll talk about the projectiles, and we'll also talk about how you add your new weapon to the weapon station if you want it to be accessible via the weapon station, okay? But my suggestion to you would be just to manipulate one of the guns that's already in it, okay? Let me go ahead and mention that real quick before we leave out of this stream. So... Check this out. Say you have your own assault rifle model that you want to use. You don't want to use this one that I've got in here. You want to use your own. Well, all you have to do is open the child blueprint of the assault rifle and go to the uh, viewport. All you got to do is come in here and change the damn model out, guys. Right? So just go in here and say, okay, screw it. We're using the uh, M4 rifle. Look, now it's got a completely different mesh. Right? But the catch to that is, is that it still has all these class defaults that you can tamper with. So instead of creating a brand new weapon, just bring your model in, change the mesh out, and change it to, oh, this is supposed to be a shotgun, right? A legitimate shotgun model. Change the model of the child blueprint that I already have in here, this one, open its uh, child blueprint up, and go into the viewport, Right? And instead of using this crappy thing as a shotgun, actually plug in your legitimate shotgun mesh. Okay? So see there, guys, this is a kick-ass template. Anybody that don't like this has got something wrong with them. Because this is insanely awesome. Okay? So uh, anyway, yeah, but we'll still go over how you can add more weapons to the station if you want to uh, in the next video. Okay? But I'm give out. I mean, there was a lot to cover in this, and I... You know, I likely did miss a couple things, but, um, you know, this should give you a good foundation to be able to understand how this weapon blueprint works. Now, I'm not sh you know, these are not meant to show you guys how these are made. This is a courtesy video for people who buy this template from MoCap Online to have a reference where they can come watch this video and they should understand exactly what they're getting in that project, right? Now, there'll be videos with a high level overview of what this template comes with but these last couple ones that i've made here is to get into the hey this is exactly what you can do with this thing right now i think guys that that's pretty awesome this weapon blueprint when we finish up the next video with the projectile to boot you're going to be like oh man the possibilities are limitless and they are literally right and we'll talk and we'll, we'll create a couple new weapons in that other video or we'll uh, at least manipulate some of these that are already in here and I'll show you just exactly what I mean, right? Uh, you know, we can make grenade launchers, we can make rocket launchers, and instead of it shooting one, we can make this... Th here, let me ask you guys, I'll leave you guys with this question uh, that watch this video, okay? Um, let me go ahead and spawn in here. And let's go over here to this weapon station and actually get the launcher, right? So I think that's number five. So look at what this weapon is, guys. See that? Now, I'm going to leave you guys with this question. How can we make that thing shoot more than one rocket at a time and give it a bunch of spread? How can we do that? Think about it. All the stuff you learned in this video here about what the capabilities of this is. How could we make this thing, instead of shooting one rocket, how could we make it shoot four 
and they all spread out and go in a different, you know, spread pattern. How could we do that? And I'm going to leave you guys with that, okay? And uh, I don't know when I'll be making the next video for the projectile side and the weapon station side of this, but it'll be soon because this template's going to be available for sale soon, like super soon, like before the end of this month soon, okay? Uh, and once again, send all inquiries about that to MoCap Online. This is not my template. I was subcontracted to build this template for them. Right? They'll be the ones selling this template. Okay, uh, So with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream here. I didn't have live chat open because I wanted to stay focused uh, on this template. Uh, you know, uh, But I appreciate anyone who tuned in live or anyone who watches this after the fact. This is John Galt, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, fellas.